we're going to see a few changes at the youth camp this year. Uh, one of the changes is um, rather than to have the whole team, committee members, lead the camp, we're going to try and see how to help individuals uh, learn uh, leadership skill and then learn to work as a team better. This year, Elijah is going to be the camp commandant. And so he, this is actually the first camp commandant we've had in 11 years. So that's pretty significant. So the committee members learn to support him, learn to love him, don't hate him, uh, you know, uh, put up with him. I think they, you have you know, lots to learn. It's not easy to relate with people. You mustn't think it is an easy thing to do, to relate with anyone. We all need to learn how to relate, right? Okay, it, it, uh, don't, don't be, oh, how come some people are just so friendly, you know? They relate so easily. It happens in movies. In real life, everything is learned. Okay, so you learn to be a friend, and I hope you learn to be a good friend. Right? And there are good things you want to learn. Learn how to be a good friend. Learn how to relate. And I wish this for all of you. So take time to talk to each other, relate to one another. Uh, right? This is pre-camp, but camp is, feels like it's already started, so mine as well. Right? Relate to the old, older one. You watch, everybody will sit with almost age. You know? The young ones will sit with the younger ones. The older ones will sit with the older ones. Usually the older you get, the further behind you sit. <laughs> so I determined to sit in the front. I, I refuse to do that and, until Lillian joins me. Not, not that it's bad, okay? Nothing bad. It's just human. We tend to just be in our own comfort zone, and we stay there, right? So, it's okay until you need to learn these things. These are called life skill. When you go out there, you will need such skill. How do I relate with people? Okay, so might as well learn them now. So, what do you learn? You have many th wonderful things to learn, in fact. They're really... You learn a lot about yourself. You want to learn about the world you live in. And of course, at a church camp, we learn about God. And how is He involved in all this? Okay? So, this is what we're going to look forward to. Okay? Yeah, really, you, you learn about yourself. Wow, what a, you really learn about yourself. That's the first part. And then, okay, the world, now, how do I... Because who you are, how you see the world. So if you're a child, you see the world quite differently. Okay? So how is Disneyland built? Disneyland is built from the perspective of how a child should see the world. This is the happiest place in the world. Right? Did you know Disneyland was built? The, the, the person who built it, he looked at it, sat on the bench, eating nuts, look at his kids. You know what? Something should be built that family should enjoy together and it will be a wonderful day and a day you don't want it to end. By the way, that bench sits in the original Disneyland. It's still there in Anaheim. All these years, over 60 years, began with a dream. You know, I want to create a world that happy, oh, where dreams can come true. That was the world, the standpoint of Walt Disney. Because when he's a child, he didn't have very much. He's a farm boy. Grew up, and when he went to Main Street, he saw the lights, he saw so many, and it just brought him so many happy memories. Walt Disney literally created Disneyland based on his memories. Did you know that? This was all, all looks so old, you see. Of course, then along the way it grew. There, there, there's all, all the other worlds. And then Mickey Mouse came along. 
Well, how come so many animals? Because he was from the farm. All his friends were animals. Except they didn't really talk. <laughs> Maybe they did. <laughs> That's why he liked the animals. Oh, the mouse can talk. The dog can talk. His dog was called Skinny. That was his dog. Maybe that was the, how that you know, skinny dog, I forgot his name, came about. <laughs> Goofy. Right? It, it all came from how he saw it. And you know what? It was his childhood that he wanted to create. And he says, this is, he literally created Disney World, Disneyland. And, and you know, by the way, of course, today is a billion dollar thing. Very expensive to go. You have to save up very, very, very hard to, to go to that place, <clears throat> right? We don't have one here, so you've got to travel overseas to go. But you see, that's where it began for him, from the memories that he had. You know, we should have good and happy memories. I'm glad Elijah had some happy memories that he can talk about, of camps, of being in Bethel, being here. And by the way, he's, uh, he's, he's the same age as the church. Right? Bethel turns how old this year? 24, and that's Elijah's age. So great, great. Have, to have you grow up with this. These are my memories. These are my, you know, this is the happiness that I have. These are my friends, and I really hope with you know, in the passing of time, I never see one camp. I really don't. I see a whole series of things. We build up from one to one, one level to another. It is all connected. So as you grow up here, they used to be the kids here, Ta you know, Tabitha, you know, right? Some of them I can recognize their face because that's how I saw them too. That's how I still remember them. <laughs> their face. But Garrett was, and Kelly was a bit tricky because, you know, both no hair, they look the same. <laughs> when they don't have hair, you all look the same when you don't, you try. I mean, don't, don't try, but just, you know, it can look the same. Hey, brothers and sister, James and Christabel, very close. Right? Of course, Chrissy got long hair, nice long hair now, but when she got short hair, James, you know, James is short hair, actually very similar features. Christabel and uh, James. When they laugh, similar, similar laugh. So they're brother and sisters. Right? Sometimes hard to tell. Sometimes uh, ha hard, sometimes easy. Happy memories. Maybe so how important these memories are. Now, I'm saying this because this is, this, when, when John wrote one John, you don't know how many years have gone past. He's an old man then. He remembered all the things that Jesus, the time he spent with Jesus, what he heard from Jesus, all the way back to John 15. How did it stay with him like that? Yeah, really fascinating. Here he was a young fisherman, 1 John, so there's a big time gap, you know. When we read John 15 today, at camp we'll be reading 1 John, his, his letter. Okay? Big time gap. He's, uh, he calls parents my little children. Now, you can imagine how old he is. If you call parents, I dare not call the aunties here my little children. <laughs> you, you, you will be really... Ill. Right? No, I'm not going to state anything else. But <laughs> they can be at the same age as my mom. Not grandmom, but just mom. Right? Cannot, my little... Because I, you don't have that age. You just imagine, here is John, much older person, that just gives you a clue, and he recalls all the things. What I, he has seen, what he has heard, he wants to share it with people that their joy may be full. Wow. This is how Disney did it. This is how John did it. Right? Except Disney, you pay a lot of money and your joy may not be full. How full can it be? You have to line up two hours to sit one ride. <laughs> it is tears. Wow, crazy. Not that I line up. 
for two. Do I just walk away? One hour, wow. What to do? Your daughter wants to go on it. Ah, oh, it is happiest place for them, not you. <laughs> it's a different thing. So what do you do? You know, treasure. This is something that we want. Turn to John chapter 15, and here is a beautiful, really beautiful, and we want to really help you to see how you can develop a relationship. Jesus offered them, showed them, became an example of relationship. This is his model, right? This is the kind of relationship that will really be a blessing to your heart. Okay? The world has its own model of friendship. Jesus has his model of friendship, and they're not the same. I like Jesus' kind of friendship. Take a look at this. John 15, beginning with verse 4, right? All the way down, count, look for the word abide. How many? How many? First one to get it gets a reward from Elijah since he's giving out rewards. How many? You've got to look at your Bible. You know, I already counted, so I don't. Can you find the word abide? All right, verse 4, abide. Okay, and verse 4 again, abide. Even one verse got three times, but one, abide. See, count one, abide, abide. Right? Abide in me, abide in the vine, unless you abide in me. Right? Verse 5, he who abides in me. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me. Verse 7, if you abide in me. Verse 9, as the Father loved me, I've loved you, abide in my love. Right? Okay, oop, missed one. Verse 7, my words abide in you, right? Verse 10, you will abide in my love, right? I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in His love. All right, how many times? Mention. How many did you get? See, you've got to learn to relate, you know, you've got to learn to speak up. Right? Hi, are you there? How many times mention? All right, uh, Matt, you got it? How many times? You're not counting, see? Ah, you got to see whether you're... Are you still, are you still counting or not? Yeah. Ten. Is there ten there? Let's count. How many got ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, ten. By the way, Look at verse 11. You see the word remain, my joy remain in you? It's the same word, abide. Maybe the English trend. Well, I don't know why he, did, why he didn't use the word abide since he was using all the way abide, true. It's actually the same word. Maybe he said, I've used it 10 times. Maybe it's time to change. <laughs> hey, change, remain. Actually, the word remain and the word abide is exactly the same word in the Greek text. What kind of relationship is of the Lord? You know, I like this one. This kind of relationship is one that remains. What kind of relationship does God want to develop with us? A lasting one. See, a lot of relationships don't last these days. Today I'm your friend, tomorrow I'm not your friend. Some friendship lasts for as long as primary school, then that's it. Or high school. Hi, you are my best friend in high school, but that was it. Can you imagine a friendship that really can last, abide? Right? So, how long has Elijah abided in Bethel? 24 years, not bad. You're here. You have remained. 
I remain in this. You know, people don't remain. They, they have an interest in this, then they lose their interest. Right? Children, their interests don't last very long. I know this. I got two. Right? So, last time Christabel used to like this thing called Shopkins. I don't know whether you've heard of them. This little thing, I have no idea why would anyone like this look like a thing you put on the top of your pencil. I said, Daddy, you know what? If I'm a good girl, you get me a Shopkin and okay, all right, I'll get it. You know, I have searched high and low for rare editions, for limited editions, for all kinds of editions. And the other day, she put a whole box. I said, what are you doing? I don't like them anymore. The whole box. I said, you, you, are, you cannot throw them away. You've got to give it to someone special. Maybe I'll give it to a little, another you know, a person that likes it. Interest gone is discarded. Right? This is how relations get. Right, I'm very interested. I've lost my interest. Are you like that? Interest only for the moment? And then you've lost interest. Some people approach their faith, well, I'm interested for the moment. And that interest comes when youth camp comes. Oh, I'm very interested to, to read, to understand. Wow, camp comes, very interested. Hey, the rest of the year, not interested, not very interested. I like this. Look at the word abide. Jesus' relationship made such a big difference in the life of John. How did he know how to be a good friend to others? He learned it from Jesus. See, lots of things we can learn from Jesus. Right? He learned it, but his advantage was he was personally there. He was actually there. So whatever he learned, he's going to pass down to others. And they will pass down to others, and then they pass down to us. So, and so if we read the Bible, we will have a clue. Wow, I like this. This is how they ha- this is the kind of relationship that they have. And the word is abide. Mentioned 10 times, plus one, 11 times. What kind of relationship do we want to have? I want to be a person that is a state. You know, I, I want to remain. You want to be true. What kind of friend? One that will abide. Take a look at this, right? And so this is the kind of relationship. Now, we go on further. Abide in one. One, of course, abide in me. Okay? And then two, verse seven, we read in verse seven, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. Right? So abiding in the words of this friend. Okay? In the words of Jesus. Now, we go on further. As uh, abide in my love, verse 9. As the Father loved me, I have loved you. Abide in my love. Isn't that wonderful? That relationship. You learn to relate. What kind? You know what? I am, I'm going to be here. I'm going to have a, the kind of person, you are one that is true. You will remain. You know, you remain in this word. You remain in this love. The same love. The Father loved Jesus. This is the kind of love I want to have. Not any kind of love. This is special love. This is God's kind of love. You see how the Father loved the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, that's the kind of love. We need to be able to experience that. Right? So, while I um, spent a bit of time with James over the school holiday, Uh, Chrissy has her friends, her cousins to go out with, all girls. Here's the boy. He's, He's got nobody... 
So I brought him to Perth City, and we went to the Perth Library, it's Perth City Library, which is amazing, quite a, uh, a really uh, beautiful library, new, new to me anyway. Uh, have you been there? It is a really nice library. Uh, levels, and then we, uh, he's learned that day, what's G, what's G? Ground floor. Right? And then level one, two, three. Okay, children's level. Right, let's uh, look at, look at uh, let's go and read a book here. That was interesting. Right? So here is a book that he picked up. Can I read? On looking at it, hey, this looks like a very interesting book. It's about warriors. So I sat down to read it with him. It's one of those graphic novels. Okay, there was Garfield. Don't think he'll be interested. There will be Asterix. Don't think he'll be interested. And then there was this warrior something or other. Hey, really, look, this cartoon. So what? It should be great. It should be wonderful. So I looked at it, read it, don't really understand it. And then it, then it became a bit strange. So it's a, this little girl, and then she had a little, little miniature size of herself with an angel and a horn, and says, do you want to go and smooch someone? I said, what? what? And a good thing James can't read, you see, so I was reading ahead. What, what is good? <laughs> Maybe smooch is a word used to, I don't know what. And true enough, this little thing is encouraging the little girl to go and look for someone to kiss. Return book. <laughs> what on earth was that all about? And I was stunned. I, you know, I was stunned. This is a little cartoon. How come he's talking about smooching someone? And they're all smooching, smooching. I'm like, wow, well, that's it. Let's go read Garfield. The old ways are still best. Can I tell you something? See, the world's kind of idea of love is so different. Okay, you've got to be careful. You've got to understand there is, hey, this is, what is this? Straight away, you need, ha, oh, this is not going to be good. How come the ch children will be learning all this kind of stuff? We're yeah, talking about romantic relationships here. They're not really robotic. You can smooch anybody who wants. Don't go around kissing people. Right? Girls, right? Don't. Uh. <laughs> Matt, don't. <laughs> or else I'll get your sister on you. She's bigger than you at this point in time anyway. <laughs> right? They go crazy things. So you want to be careful. There are all kinds of crazy things out there. So I have to, wow, look through it very, very carefully. You've got to look at it. What kind today you need to understand? Love. Okay, you can't just say love. What kind? And here is a very pure, a very beautiful love as the Father loved me. Wow. So you've got to know a little bit about how God as, a, as Father loved the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it's a wonderful love there. I have loved you. His how Jesus loved his disciples. So we are, go and look up this kind of love. And this is the love that, you know what, I'm going to stay with. You choose. What kind of love do you want? Well, this is wonderful. Okay? So, you, if you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. How do I abide? How do I remain in this love? Well, this is, and, and it says, if you keep my commandment. Now, what is the commandment? Just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in His love. You see, if there is a wonderful relationship, the Father's love, right? It is ex understood, it is appreciated, it is experienced. You have no problem keeping the Father's commandment because he loves you. You would want to keep it. This is my way of telling the Father I love Him too. His commandments matters to me. His commandment is something I treasure. So it's not just saying, yeah, I love you back. 
It's you keep it, right? Of course, you have to know it. And what is that commandment? These things I have spoken to you. Now, if you do this, look at this. Your joy may remain, my joy, sorry, my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Wow, that is wonderful. So this is a very, this is a, a, a relationship that is such a blessing. It really is. What is that? You, you see this here? There is the word. There is love. There is joy. Right? These things are there for us to discover them, for us to experience them, the joy of the Lord. Okay? So this is uh, the first part of this. Jesus helps His disciples understand that relationship that He has given to them all these years. It is now for them to understand it uh, for themselves. Now, let's go to verse 12. This is the commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. See? The practice of this love. Love one another. Relate same principle as I have loved you, this one, to each other. Okay? Right? Greater love than no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. There you go. Verse 14, you are my friends. See, that's his friendship. This is Jesus' kind of friendship. To say, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer will I call you servants. Servants don't know anything. See, this is the relation. When here is a friend, when a friend asks you to do something, now you understand friendship. And the person does it with love, with joy in their heart. You know what? I will do it because my friend say, whatever I command you, here is the Lord Jesus. Whatever I command you, you do it. You know what? Why? Because you are my friend. Right? This is a special, uh, wonderful thing. This is friendship. Okay? You understand the relationship part? And it's beautiful to, to be able to see this. Now, we go on further. Verse 16, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Now, this is interesting. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and your fruit should remain. So, friendship begins with a choice. You choose the kind of friends you want to have. What kind of friends do you want to have? Jesus chose, and He chose them. Now that's special. Why would, the, why would Jesus choose them? Is it because they were wonderful people? Not really. Because they were good people? Not really. Because they, they were just like Jesus at that point? Not at all. And yet we read, I have chosen you and appointed you. Right? This is Jesus' model. Right? Abiding. Look, look at how he abides in God's word. Look at how he abides in God's love. Right? And in doing that, look at his life, fruitful. See, this is what you call positive influence. There are friends that will influence you positive, but there are also friends that can influence you very negative. Here is Jesus helping them to understand that relationship. You don't want, I call you friends. I have chosen you. You see this? It is, this is how John 
right, begin to realize, begin to understand what Jesus has given. Now, it's a question of whether you want it. Would I, would I want this? Would I, would, if, if Jesus would choose me to be his friend, would that special? That would be really special. Right? You may not be chosen because, wow, this person is, is you're, you're not out there. People choose you, okay, because you are smart. Choose you because you are very popular. Choose you because you're not left behind. Here is Jesus, and he does something very, really wonderful. He chooses you. What is the condition? What is the criterion? Not because you've done anything. That's why they say, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And I appointed you. In meaning to say, he's going to do something wonderful in our life as a friend. Right? This is a French, This is a wonderful friendship. It is never about... This is what John learned years later. He was, as a friend, look, look what he did for others. The kind of blessing he brought to their life. He wrote to them, he instructed them that their joy may be full. Where did he learn all this? Huh, from Jesus. Okay, now, we come to this part where we talk about the world a little bit. Because this is different. Okay, now you're going to see this a little bit different. Okay, now, verse 18, we read. Okay, this is understanding the world from the standpoint of the Lord Jesus. Now, we may not understand the world like this. Here is a friend with better understanding, with much to offer, and he helped John and the rest of the disciples understand the world and how the world can relate or respond to them. Okay? And he tells them, verse 18, if the world hates you. Now, you've got to understand this. Okay? Disneyland is entertainment and amusement park and all that, but it's not the real world. Outside in the world, there will be this problem called hatred. And you've got to know how you're going to cope. How do you cope with hatred? And there is hatred in the world. People ha have hatred because you're not, you're not the same as me. There's hatred because you look different. but hatred is there, right? So you've got to understand this very carefully. So, and there will be hatred towards those who will follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jesus tells them ahead of time, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Right? So don't be surprised if you, if, if you would follow the Lord, if you have this relationship with the Lord, and you want to change, you know what, I... Will the world hate you? So Jesus tells his disciples, they will. It hated me before it hated you. Now, you go on further. If you were of the world, the world will love its own. So, one, what does the world will hate? And there are many, the hatred is expressed in so many ways, hatred. And above all, many things they hate. They hate. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be hate towards those who follow Jesus too. Right? Now, the love of the world. 
What does the world love? Now, and then we read. The world loves its own. Right? If you are of the world, the world would love its own. So there are two things here. One, they were people of the Lord. Are they people of the world? You are not, if you do all that I do, do just re- behave the same way as I do. Do as I do, right? Love. But if you don't, there'll be hate. And this is pretty sobering, right? So this was a, uh, to, to help them to understand, hey, you know what? This is the world. And we've got to understand this for ourselves. How do you cope? Right? Read on. Remember the world, the word that I said to you. Now, we, before we read that part, verse 19, if you are of the world, the world would love its own, yet because you are not of the world. So twice mentioned now, if you were of the world, the world will love its own. The world will love you, but you are not of the world, right? Because it hates you, okay? And then, um, because you are not of the world, now, but I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Now, that is what we want to uh, look at. So, here is the world. There is hate. There is love for its, the world will love its own. Okay? Out of this, chosen out of the world, you have to get out of the world. That's what Jesus did. So it's just two, two models of relationship. The first part of it, this is a relationship Jesus has with them. Now, you cannot relate with the Lord. You cannot love the Lord. You cannot love the Father. You cannot love these things. And then I also love the world. You just can't. Because they're two totally, it just can't. The world will love its own. The world will hate the things of the Lord. The world will hate. This is what will happen. Right? And so, to help them to understand, how come there's this hatred towards me? Because you know you are not of the world. If you were, the world will love you. Right? Do you want to hate it back? No. This is not of the Lord. This is, this is, this, this, the, the, uh, the way the world hates. What is our part? You don't need to hate it. But you don't need to love it either. Okay? So you, you two got to take a look at what Jesus is saying very, very carefully and appreciate this. Right? And then he says, Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will persecute you too. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If they had come uh, and spoken to them, they would have no sin. Right? If I had not come, sorry, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Now, how come they hate the Lord? This is how come, right? But now they have no excuse because, hang on. So what did Jesus do? He came, he preached, repent, turn from your sins, right? Enter, this is the kingdom of God. They didn't like that message. They didn't like him. And so they hated him. 
He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen, also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word may be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. So it is not because Jesus did you know, make, the, make their life difficult. He was there to remind them of their sin all the time. No, he didn't. He be who he is. His life, his character, his way. But people look at it, why are you, why are you not following us? Why are you not doing the things we're doing? If you are not with us, you are against us. And they hated him. And that's how it works in the world too. Okay? If you want to be part of us, you've got to do what we do. And if you don't, we hate you. It happens in schools. And so a lot of the time, ah, I want to fit in. You see, all my friends, they're going, to, they're going here, they're going there. I want to do what they do. I want to fit right in. What is the cost of fitting right in? Young people, what is that cost? Then you've got to ask yourself, would, would I do it? If you know it's sin, if you know it's wrong, would, I, would you do it? For Jesus, he just be what he is. I am not off. Very distinctive. This is of God, of the Father, and I'm going to remain in him. I, this is what he taught his disciples. You cannot be in two worlds. Well, I want to go, I want to be, I want to be here, but I'm going to be here too. I'm going to be here. You're going to be driven all over the place. And so Jesus was very clear. I want to tell you this. They will hate you. Okay? So don't try to please them. Oh, I'm going to, I, don't, I don't like anyone to hate me. See, the, the problem is, I don't want people to hate me. I want to be, well, I'm, I will compromise. I want to be well-liked. If that, if that means, if people know that I'm a Christian, if people know I believe in Jesus, if people know I follow Jesus, they're going to hate me, then I better not tell anyone I'm a Christian. Would you go that way? You know, I was reading a story of this man. Uh, you will probably hear quite a bit about him in uh, the youth camp. Because I was really just deeply challenged. Now, he is not, he came from, he went from high school and joined the army. He didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. And so he went from high school, went to join the army, and hopefully find some purpose in life. And he was uh, quite an athletic person, and he asked, what is the hardest part in the whole army? Which unit is the most extreme and the, the best? Oh, so someone told him, the rangers, if you pass, if you survive their training, and their training is grilling. And so he took it on, and he literally became a ranger. Now, this, he became well-known because of this movie made. Josh Hannett was there. All the other characters were there. Eric Bana. The movie is called Black Hawk Down. Have anyone seen or heard of that movie? It's actually a true story. In Mogadishu, where they sent special forces there to, uh, you know, to literally, because of the warlord there that was killing people, that was intimidating everyone, so the U.S. sent people there. It was meant to be a simple mission, but it went over. Now, the person who was there was this guy, Captain Jeff Strucker. And he talked about, I, you know, he, he became a Christian. And in the army, it is the hardest thing to, you have to do what everybody does, or else they will really make your life miserable and suffer. And he refused. He says no. Through training, and they really gave him a hard time. They hated him. He said, when you come out with us to drink, he said no. When you come without to party, he says, no, I, I'm not. And he really, really gave him a very, very hard time. 
You know, he determined to be the best, the, the, the strongest, to show them Christians are not weak. I do not need to live like that. I can live as a Christian following Jesus and still be a wonderful, faithful, loyal, good soldier. And he did. When people started to die, because it was a mission that was really dangerous, he had the whole city firing at them. They had to go back several times to go and rescue people. And that night, he just, he said, Lord, I think I'm going to die because there's no way I can go back out there and survive this. And bullets are flying everywhere. They are shooting rocket, rockets at them, rock, RPG rocket la you know, launching rockets at them, and, and several of the, his, his friends are already dead. He said, if I die tonight, I've got to know exactly where I will be. And there and then, he said, Lord, I just need to know that you're going to be there with me. I will be with you. You see, this whole idea of abiding, this special word, abide in me and I in you, remain, you will always be with me. It became so real to him that fear went. You, he says, he was sitting there and rangers are the most meant to be the toughest, the, the bravest, they've gone to extreme condition, they're meant to be you know, very macho and all that. He says, we saw rangers crying in the corner. Because they, they, they're just, they were just so afraid. And he was the captain that is going to leave, lead another group. And they don't even know where they're going. They're just taking orders. You go. Ex you'll bring people back. How am I going to do this? What am I going to tell this 19-year-old boy? And he said, there and then. That was the moment where you know, his faith became so precious to him. His relationship Jesus, with Jesus became so real to him. And it has to be real. His love becomes so true to him. He went. They, it lasted several days. And finally, they got out. You know, when he got out, he managed to survive it where many died. And he said, maybe God is calling me. Maybe God is just, you know, he really, truly treasure this faith relationship that he had. And he's going to be faithful to the Lord. He went on to become a, a continue to be the best uh, ranger in his whole regiment. This is what Jesus said. They will hate you. What will you do about it? And he had to choose. Shall I choose friendship with the world or shall I choose my relationship, friendship with the Lord? And he chose with the Lord. And because he did, the Lord, remember, you didn't choose me. I chose you and I will appoint you and you will be fruitful. So I was really deeply challenged by his faith in, in Jesus. And this is the kind of faith that we need today that is not afraid to say, you know what, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I love the Lord and I'm going to remain in Him no matter what. If you don't like it, you don't like it, I can't help you. If you're going to hate, wow, I, I, wow, this is what the Lord said, they will hate. But I will remain faithful. I will remain true. I will remain abiding in the Lord. At this youth camp, I really hope to share with you. I know out there, there is, and you're wondering, how can I, you know, there's so many, I'm just so drawn to love for the world. How can I overcome this? This is what this youth camp is all about. I really want to help you, share with you, encourage your heart that there is a wonderful relationship. Begin here, relationship with, with the Lord. When it is this real, right? 
when it is this precious, why do you want to love the world? Okay? Well, we're going to try and help you um, understand this, appreciate, especially some of you who are very, very young, uh, right? To help you understand how this relationship with God really works. Okay? But then it begins in the human level too. Here is John, and he will write to people, and he would encourage them, and he will befriend to them, and he will say, you know what? All these things we've heard from Jesus, we want to share this with you. Same thing, this is what, we over the years, this is what we have known about the Lord, we want to share this with you, that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full too, in knowing that you, you can have this relationship with Jesus. In knowing that you, can, you don't have to be afraid of the world. In knowing you can live in the world and say, you know what, I, this is me and I love the Lord. Okay, this is our prayer for you, our encouragement to you um, at this up and coming camp. All right, so um, set for yourself goals. This is my encouragement to you as you prepare. How shall we prepare for the youth camp coming up? The theme is taken from 1 John, uh, 1 John 2 15 do not love the world. What is the world that we are not to love? Well, we have started on what Jesus said. Well, look at it. The hatred of the world is there. The love of the world is there too. The sinfulness of the world. Why does the world hate the Lord? Well, it, the, where they, they reject the whole idea of sin. Why you talk about sin? They will mock sin. They will hate any idea that they have to own up to sin. Rejection is there as well. So you, these are some of the things you need to uh, appreciate, understand. And then, how do we live in this world? Can we live happy, joyful? Of course, okay? It's not, do not love the world. Oh, this is going to be a very sad camp. It is far from it. Okay? May you find that fullness of joy in knowing the Lord to be very real, very special in your life. Okay? Well, looking forward to uh, sharing some of these things to you at the camp. This is how you can pre prepare for youth camp uh, beginning on Monday. Plan to read 1 John. Would you do that? So we read a little bit of John 15 uh, this afternoon. Read 1 John. Chapter 1 to 5. Easier to read 1 John 1 to 5 than Gospel of John. Gospel of John, 21 chapters. Okay, 1 to 5. You're on school holiday anyways. Okay, so come to camp all prepared. And so when you sit down and you listen, you, you're not lost. 1 to 5. Okay, learn a little bit about who John is today a disciple of Jesus, and he was taught, and he experienced all these things, and he's, you know, he's just greatly blessed because he has this relationship with the Lord, and he wants to impart this, share this with others. Okay? Same thing what we want to do. We want to share something with you that is really, really special to us. Right? Relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's pray for a while. Our Father, we thank you that we can have this word recorded by John himself. What Jesus said to him must have left such an impact that he recalled it, he recorded it, that we may benefit from this, that we may learn how to develop a relationship with you that is strong. Help us to think about this and prepare ourselves for the youth camp coming up. Help us to seek to develop a relationship just like John, a relationship with you that lasts for a very long time, for the rest of our life. A joy that can be full, that love that can be intact. May we desire this for ourselves too. We pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. Okay, well, thank you for being here. Look forward to starting camp on Monday evening. So orientation, don't forget, 5.30, isn't it? Okay, we'll see you then. Looking forward to it. Now we, we have some refreshment. Uh, and then uh, we've got to get ready for tomorrow worship. Okay, all right. You can, uh, we're going to have some refreshment. You can have some fellowship. Then we'll see you tomorrow. And then begin camp.